This video is part of a series about nine default tools that I like to install in Kali Linux. In this video we'll be talking about Bloodhound. Its GitHub description is six degrees of domain admin. So what does that mean to you and why would you want to use it? Let's imagine for a moment that you're on a phishing assessment and you've hooked a user um, or you're on an internal network pen test and you have access as a user or you, or you have user credentials. And now you want to escalate your privileges to domain admin. So this tool will help you to visualize paths to escalate your privileges. It will also help you find commands to run and more information about how to exploit the information contained in the graphs. There's two parts to Bloodhound. There's the console, which we'll see in just a minute, and then there's the ingesters. So you have um, a C-sharp compiled executable here, a sharphound.exe, and you have a PowerShell script. So now let's look at how to install it. Here on the main page, if you scroll down, it's got Bloodhound Docs, the link. And the installation, it walks you through right here. However, since we're on Kali, it's actually pretty simple. So running as root, we're going to issue the command apt install bloodhound. And this will also install Neo4j. Now I'm going to pause the video for a minute because this is going to take a few seconds. We'll be right back. So bloodhound and Neo4j have completed installation. So the next thing we need to do is run Neo4j console. In just a second, this will give us a URL to open. The default password is Neo4j. Then it prompts you to change the password. Now we need to run the Bloodhound console, so we're going to press Alt F2. Enter Bloodhound. Log in with that username and password. Now it says no data returned from query. This is because we still have to run the ingester and import that data. So you can Run the ingester, the executable, or PowerShell script directly from the console on a domain joined host or a non domain joined host. In this case, I've used EvilWinRM to upload the ingester. And here you can see I ran the ingester. And it's created a zip file, which is what I've downloaded. So back to the Bloodhound console, we're going to import that zip file. And now we're going to drag and drop that zip file onto the Bloodhound interface. You see it says processing the file. While it's processing, um, something that you should be aware of is that you, you can see this finished processing very, very quickly. This is just a very small Active Directory lab domain. However, if you're on a very large Active Directory domain, I've seen this take many hours to complete. Um, one particular instance, it took about six hours to run. And on another um, very large domain that basically spanned the globe, um, I had to let this run overnight. So just be prepared, this could take a while to finish. Now the next thing we want to do is mark any users or computers that we own. We have credentials or we have admin access to a particular system. So I know that we own DOM user. We have their credentials. Right click, mark user as owned. Now we're going to do the same to Win10, which is a system where that DOM user has local admin credentials. Mark computer is owned. 
Now before we go further, something you need to be aware of is that in this case, in this demo, it may not find any exploitable paths because this is just a very simple Active Directory lab environment and I haven't taken the time to introduce any configurations or misconfigurations that may be exploitable. So next we're going to type in domain admins and we're going to right click and choose shortest pass to hear from owned. So the owned was that user and computer that we previously marked as owned. Now no data returned from query. So obviously there are not any paths from the owned user and system to domain admin. But just to show you some more about the user interface and how it works, let's so right click and choose shortest paths to here. That would basically find all paths to domain admin from anywhere, even paths that we don't own. Okay. So let's say for example, if it had found a path from the users or systems that you've marked as owned and you see the paths in here, um, mouse over and when you see the tag pop up, right click and choose help. We'll give you tabs including info, abuse info, opset considerations, and references to further information. Now, if we actually had some a pass that we could abuse from that owned user or system, it would give you um, possible power, PowerShell commands that you can run here, um, as well as uh, references to how to exploit these paths. So this was a very simple introduction on installation and basic usage. Bloodhound is a very powerful tool. Um, it's easy to get started, but it can be very complicated, but it is definitely worth the time and effort to learn more about how to use it. So back here in the documents, under further reading and viewing, there's a lot of blog posts as well as YouTube videos on how to use Bloodhound. There's also um, a Bloodhound Slack. And it's the Heroku app link. Join us on Slack. So, so let's say you've run into some problems with Bloodhound or you don't understand something in the documentation. Um, this is a place where you can go to get help. It's a, it's a very good community. Uh, Bloodhound is only one of the subjects discussed there. Uh, there's a lot of other things about offensive security discussed on the Slack. Um, and it's a great place to hang out. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please leave a comment.